At this point, the cat is out of the bag with Grand Seiko. Long considered more of an enthusiast-only option for those in the know, the broader watch market has now caught on to the Japanese brand's boundary-pushing movement tech and incredible finishing standards for the money. And in this video, we're going to be looking at one of my favorite new releases this year with the SBGE 285, a luxurious yet sporty spring drive GMT with a compelling smaller case dimension set. Let's jump into it. So this year has become the year of the GMT in essentially every segment of the market. And two watches that I would recommend on teddybaldister.com that we have for sale are the Longines Zulu Time and the Mito Ocean Start GMT. Now the Zulu Time is easily one of the best releases from Longines in the last five years. It really shook up the GMT market, offering a watch that was $1,000 lower than the other market leader with the Tudor Black Bay, around that $4,000 range is coming in closer to $3,000. COSC certified true GMT movement on the inside, uh, three dial variations to choose from from durable ceramic inserts to match. And the same could be said for the Mito Ocean Star GMT, except dropping the price range down to $1,500. Ceramic bezel, 200 meters of water resistance, now featuring different colorways, including that new Pepsi color scheme and a true GMT movement. So from a cost to value ratio, one of the best options that you're going to find in this segment without question. Links to those will be in the description down below. Every purchase comes with a full factory warranty. We're an authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry. And then in addition to that, every purchase also helps in bringing more content like this to you every single week. Check them out in the description down below, teddybalasar.com. Now jumping back to the subject at hand and just understanding some abbreviated backstory, the name Grand Seiko dates back to 1960 and was an aspirational extension of Seiko's standard collection. However, in the modern context, Grand Seiko and Seiko are more rigidly separate nowadays, with Grand Seiko having been launched as a completely autonomous brand in 2017, a move that directly coincided with their rightful ascension among the watch enthusiast hierarchy. With this rise, we've seen a barrage of new models and collections from Grand Seiko, spanning a wide array of price ranges that help showcase every level of what the brand has to offer. In a more recent development, Grand Seiko unveiled their latest creation known as the Evolution 9, a segment of the brand's collection that aims to find a crossover with their technical excellence with design codes that are reverent to the past with their 1967 44GS. In other words, this collection sits as an elevated assortment of pieces above their traditional heritage and sport collections as well as elegance collections, while maintaining nine key design finishing techniques and attributes, such as curved case profiles, deep middle grooves on those indices, and a double index at 12, just to name a few. When I attended Watches and Wonders earlier this year and had the chance to sit down with Joe Kirk, Grand Seiko's brand curator, he showed off much of the newness from Evolution 9 this year. And the novelty that excited me the most was this one, the SBGE 285. With Grand Seiko to this point, we've come to expect impressive case finishing, intriguing dial textures, and beautifully decorated calibers with unique tech, all of which are certainly present within this new Evolution 9 GMT. But for me, a leading factor for why I was drawn to this piece initially was its wearing dimensions compared to other spring drive models within more of that sports type of uh, direction. At 41 millimeters in diameter, 13.9 millimeters thick, and 47.4 millimeters in length, this case is a breath of fresh air on the wrist, wearing for me more like a true 40 millimeter watch when taking into account the smaller dial and additional real estate being occupied by the 24 hour bezel. Further improving the wear are the case and bracelet, which are constructed from Grand Seiko's high intensity titanium, a proprietary titanium alloy that offers the metal's lightweight properties, being around 30% lighter than that of steel, while also providing an enhanced level of surface hardness and corrosion resistance compared to regular titanium. Other than, of course, being lighter, the wearing experience is similar to something like the 16570 Rolex Explorer 2, or even the newer Black Bay Pro, except this one's coming in half a millimeter thinner than that in the process. In other words, this should be a mass appealing case format that should work well on the majority of wrists out there. The case finishing, as you might expect, 
is well done with sharp facets separating the curved and sloping case top from its near vertical case sides with a prominent eye-catching bevel separating the two surfaces, executed with a high polished finish. A stepped and fixed bezel also sporting the alternating finishes presents engraved and filled 24 hour markings, aiding in enabling this watch's secondary time zone functionality. At three, a signed screw down crown is located within the safety of crown guards or more here, the extension of that case is probably more accurate, working in tandem with the screw down exhibition case back and providing the 285's capable 100 meters of water resistance. Set between the 22 millimeter lugs that are drilled, the SBGE 285 is paired with a three link style bracelet. The solid end links are more prominent than you might expect and theoretically extend the lug to lug to an extent, but they are downswept to a degree where there are little negative repercussions on the wear. Now Grand Seiko has taken some flack in the past for the bracelets, but I think this one is pretty well done as it is comfortable on the wrist and is well finished with that clean chamfer along the outer link edges. A couple points to bring up here is going to be the general width of the bracelet itself in comparison to the case, as well as there being no elaborate form of micro adjustment as a result of the clasp. However, it does come with two half lengths for aiding and getting a precise fit. Again, taking up view of the watch's anterior surface, we have a dome sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating on its underside, offering a clear view of the striking yet subtle dial laying underneath. It will come with a little pushback when I say this is one of the key elements for which Grand Seiko is best known, and that is their well-finished three-dimensional dials inspired by nature. With this SBGE 285 leaning into a silver gray pattern the brand classifies as, quote, echoes the morning mist that envelops the mountains of Nagano, the home of the spring drive in winter. As some might recall, this watch was released as a pair with a black dial GMT known as the SBGE 283, which opted for a more smooth dial surface compared to the textured terrain that is on display here, a big reason for why I have chosen to showcase this one specifically. The dial is accentuated with faceted applied indices that are each complete with a small sliver of luminescent material to be in alignment with one of those nine characteristics of Evolution 9. The Dolphin style hands are here again faceted, polished, and loomed. As a pleasant surprise, the loom on this watch is actually quite impressive and stronger than what I was initially anticipating, while offering a hidden treat with the loom on the GMT hand that comes in blue to differentiate from the standard green shade that you'll see elsewhere. Between seven and eight o'clock, the familiar power reserve indicator makes its presence felt with the frame date window taking up its position at three. Dial text is minimal with only the brand's word mark and applied logo at 12 and spring drive GMT text at six. Turning the watch over, we have the other most powerful argument going for this piece, and that's the spring drive 9R66 caliber on the inside. At least for me, Grand Seiko's spring drive stands out as one of the most important pages in the history of watch movement design and innovation, offering a level of accuracy that could previously only be expected from quartz calibers with a mechanical heart and power source adapted from automatic movements. The 966 caliber housed within this watch is nothing new, having been released back in 2006, but a quick glance across the spec sheet reveals a host of attributes that would be more closely related to the current craze towards extended weekend proof power reserves for brands like Tudor, Rolex, and Omega, with this 9R66 offering a 72 hour power reserve provided by a relatively traditional automatic winding rotor and gear train. Although I can't possibly get into all the details here and I would recommend checking out my video explaining how the spring drive actually works, it is important to note how much of a engineering marvel the spring drive movement is. As this movement utilizes mechanical power as a reserve of energy with the help of the mainspring, however, with the help of a freely rotating wheel known as a glide wheel at the far end of the gear train, it is able to create a small electrical charge with the help of its magnet at its fixed point that then sends a signal to an integrated circuit and quartz oscillator, which then sends back an electromagnetic pulse to the glide wheel with the help of copper wires in close proximity to act as a frictionless brake to the glide wheel, creating that effortless sweep that you will see on the front end of the watch. In addition, this GMT variant of the 9R family also offers a bi-directional independently adjusted local hour hand that will make for easy adjustment without resetting the time during travel. And finally, the movement looks the part as well with prominently engraved waves across the central bridges and rotor, mere polished screwed heads and well-decorated engraving throughout. So now to unpack looking at this watch, and I remember having a conversation with Joe Kirk and talking about the new releases this year at Watches and Wonders, and we were seeing the Constant Force Turbion and some pretty crazy new watches from Grand Seiko. They did not hold back this year in 2022. But this was the one that 
I was most drawn to. I thought this watch was simply beautiful and really well put together. Now, some of the things that I think people are going to bring up on the negative side, the price, this is going to be more elevated compared to some of their other GMT offerings. And then also the bracelet, of course, maybe a step in the right direction, but maybe not fully there compared to the competition that's going to be uh, positioned up against with it ascending now in price. But on the other side, why I love this watch is when you get this on the wrist, I would say that this is probably the most wearable sports watch that Grand Seiko makes, especially from the GMT side of things. They have their other GMT watches that they've made that those are more in the elegance collection uh, and more of that heritage type of design compared to something like this, which has more of the stark, broad type of demeanor in terms of its case architecture and lines, finish that just makes it feel more sporty on the wrist. This wears like a true 40 and it's in a format that I just think looks very well done. The dial, as mentioned, simply spectacular, falls in a line with many of the reasons why so many people love the Snowflake. This is an extension on that, adding a GMT function, lot to like, spring drive movement on the inside with that extended power reserve of 70 plus hours, local hour hand adjustments for a true GMT function here in a lightweight case with the titanium and water resistance of 100 meters. This watch checks off the boxes in many ways, both for Grand Seiko, but also for many enthusiasts that are out there that are probably looking for a GMT watch under $10,000. We know the names below it, we know the names above it, but I do think this falls in an interesting range that I think many people are gonna start considering uh, looking in the direction more. I don't think Grand Seiko has perfected the GMT watch just yet, but this is definitely a step in the right direction, and it's probably one of my favorite releases so far in 2022. And amidst a very busy year for for GMT watches, this is one that left a big impression on me. But all right, guys, that is my take looking at this new SBGE 285. What do you think of this watch? Do you own this watch? Have you seen this watch in person? I'd love to see any personal types of ownership stories or actually seeing these watches on the wrist in the wild. Uh, that type of commentary is always good in the comments, and I know other people appreciate when people see those type of comments uh, to give them another data point for maybe investigating a bit further. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. I would appreciate that. It does help out the channel as well. I don't just say that, uh, so really, do thank you all for doing that. Also definitely check out teddybaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support here in the United States. Also a full factor warranty for all the products that we offer. And if you like content like this, how it is all made possible is through our website. So if you're in the market for something great, all the things on there, hand curated by myself and the team, it's a one-stop shop to learn. Of course, buy watches, teddybaldestar.com. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.